So in the last video we set up everything we needed to set up on the iPhone. Now we just need to finish setting up the server. So the first thing we need to do is actually enable HTTPS for our server because as you can see if we just type this in it won't actually load because we're not serving anything over HTTPS. We don't actually have HTTPS set up yet. So to get an SSL certificate, we're going to use Let's Encrypt, which is the free certificate authority that gives out SSL certificates. So we're going to install their software. We're just going to paste this in here and we're going to hit enter and it's already installed. So what we want to do is we want to say Let's Encrypt dash dash Apache and it's just going to run us through this installation. So we're just going to hit yes. Enter the domain name. It's going to be Apple Pay dot francis com. hit ok just put in francis at highco.org we're going to choose easy to install it and there we go we're done so if we just actually go back to the https version you can see it's all set up automatically that software did it for us it got the certificate for us and everything if we click details we can see here is our certificate The reason we got the certificate is because Apple Pay will only work if we have an SSL certificate installed on our web server, otherwise it won't actually let us communicate with Apple Pay and we can't actually take payments. So normally to use Apple Pay you have to have the paid Apple developer account which is $100 per year and that's because you need to tell Apple who you are before they let you use Apple Pay and to be able to do that you need to have that special developer account that costs $100. But we can do it for free if we use a service called Stripe which is a payment provider. So we're using Stripe because not only does it mean that Apple Pay is free to set up, it also makes it so much simpler to set up because we don't have to set up any of the other server side things um, on our server to be able to handle the payments. Because if we set all this up ourselves, it would be quite complicated, but Stripe makes it extremely easy and it means we can do it in a couple of minutes. So you just want to create your account and then just put in your details, click create account. And when you have your account, we want to go to the dashboard. So the reason you can see one successful charge is because that's what I did when I was testing it earlier. Uh, but what we want to do is, and you can see we're in the test mode, we're not actually in live mode, so that wasn't actually a real charge. So what we want to do is we want to go up to the top here and we want to click on account settings. And you want to go over and click on Apple Pay. And what you have to do is add your domain names. So as you can see, I have two domain names here. What I'm going to do is add the new domain name I just created, applepay.francismacnamie.com. Download the verification file and we need to upload that to our server. So what we want to do is create a directory called .wellknown. So we do that by saying make dir dot well known. Then we want to go inside of that directory. So we say cd dot well known. And here is where we want to save the file that Stripe is asking us to download. So we download the verification file. So this is the file we need to upload. So we just select all that and copy it. Then we go back to the terminal and then we type in the name of the file is going to be nano apple developer merchant. ID domain association. Then we want to put in the minus L flag to prevent nano from adding a new line onto the end of the file when we save it. Hit enter and we must paste this in. We save that with control X, hit yes and hit enter. Now we go back to Stripe and we see if that's worked. So we go to click add here and as you can see our domain has now been verified and now we can use it with Apple Pay. So the next thing we want to do back on our website is we want to go to the terminal and we want to just go back into the uh, previous directory and we want to remove all the files. We want to refresh and you can see we just get this. This is just the page you get when you have an Apache server serving an empty folder. So here we are on the Stripe documentation and the reason we're on this page is because it gives you all of the example code that you need to actually integrate Apple Pay with your website using Stripe. So we just want to copy and paste this code from Stripe. Paste it in here. And we want to go up here and we want to remove display none to make sure the button actually displays. Save that and back on the phone we'll see something like this. You can see it's quite zoomed out so what we're going to do is just open this file again and right up at the top we're just going to paste in this. And this is a special meta tag that will make the web page responsive which will just mean that it's the correct size uh, no matter what device you're viewing it on. We'll save that and we go back to the phone. You can see now that we've got the correct size button. So what we need to do is just open this again. We want to go back to Stripe. We want to copy their JavaScript. Paste it at the bottom here and here we just want to copy this first line. This is just Stripe specific stuff, it's not actually Apple Pay stuff. And we just want to create a script tag for this. Paste that in there and save that. The next thing we need to do is create the Apple Pay session, which once again we can do that with Stripe. 
So we want to copy this and paste it just below here. And what this does is it says, get the Apple Pay button, add an event listener called click. And whenever the uh, button is clicked, we want to run this method called begin Apple Pay. Next, what we need to do is just copy their example function to create an Apple Pay session. Paste it in here. Delete this line because this is the actual session. So what this says is create the payment request and set the country equal to US. That's the default. We can change that if we want. The currency to US dollars, we can change that as well. And then the total is going to be the amount we want to charge the user. And we give them a label and that label is actually displayed in the Apple Pay uh, window before they put their thumb on the fingerprint sensor to pay for it. So we'll leave that at the default for now. And then what we need to do is create the session. This is a wee bit more complicated. But all we have to do is copy this from the Stripe documentation. We just want to copy all that, remove that line and just replace it with the line we just copied. So the first thing we're doing is we're creating a variable called session and we're sending it equal to the output of this method from Stripe. And what it does is it sends a jQuery post request to a page called charges, which is the way we actually charge the user because if we don't actually include this, we can go through all the steps of Apple Pay and Apple Pay will say we've been charged, but it won't actually send the charge through to Stripe. We can send this charge through to whatever we want. We don't actually have to use Stripe for that. But it sends a request to a page that we have called charges.php and it sends a token in the body of the post request. Again, this is Stripe specific stuff. We could just literally call the uh, charges.php page if we want uh, and not use Stripe at all to actually handle the payment. And once the payment's been charged successfully, we run this method called completion and that tells the user that the Apple Pay transaction was successful and then we redirect the user to our special page called success if we want to and then if it fails we return apple pay session dot status failure which just will show the user that it didn't actually work we can change this if we want so we just copy this and if it doesn't work if the post request fails we tell the user that it failed um, by telling the apple pay session that it failed so what we're going to do is we're going to actually demo this so if i go up here we're going to change that to charges.php and what we're going to do is we're going to comment out completion apple pay session dot success and we're going to paste in failure so no matter what we're going to get returned a special failure message so we're going to save that we're going to create the file called charges php we're just going to save it as an empty file and we're going to go back to the phone now and see what this actually does so we refresh we tap on pay so you can see this is the Apple Pay dialog we've been brought up with it says payhowco.org and if we go back to the desktop and scroll down you can see that the label heiko.org that is shown in the Apple Pay window came from the label we set in the payment request variable. And that's also where the amount comes from. If we change that in this variable, it will change the amount that's displayed to the user. You can see that after the post request, no matter what happens, it's gonna return a status of failure because we're just trying to test it out. So if I hold down my thumb on the uh, sensor, it's going to do the request, but it's always gonna return failure because that's what we told it to do. So if I uh, just try that now, and it says payment not completed, we got an error and it redirected us to success.html. That's because back on index.html, we told it that no matter what happens, we're gonna return Apple Pay session.status failure. If I change this and try it one more time, even though charges.php doesn't actually do anything, and therefore we'll get a success message returned. So if we just put our thumb down now, you can see it was successful. So now what we're ready to do is actually charge the user. So we need to download this special library from Stripe. We download the zip file here. We just right click on it to save the link. We go back to our server and we type in wget and we download that file. Now we unzip it, we might have to download unzip. So we need to install that. So we'll say apt install unzip. Now we'll unzip that and we'll rename it from Stripe PHP master to just Stripe. We'll remove the master.zip file. And now we have Stripe on our server. So now what we'll do is we'll open charges.php and we'll say require once stripe slash init.php. And here back on Stripe's website, they show you how to create a charge. So we wanna copy that because we're gonna use Stripe as our payment gateway. If we were using like PayPal or whatever, we would actually just not even have to do any of this. But because we're using Stripe for everything, we're going to use Stripe's sample code for their payment gateway. So now we're just going to paste that in. And this is the charge. It doesn't even have to match the charge that was set by Apple Pay whenever we showed it to the user. So I'm just going to leave it as £10 at the moment. It's not even in the same currency. Uh, and now what we're going to do is we're just going to save that. So what you can do if you have Safari on a Mac and Safari on the iPhone is you can go to Safari in the settings on the iPhone. You can scroll down, you can go to Advanced, and you can go to Web Inspector. If you turn that on, 
then you go to Safari on the Mac, you go to the develop menu, you go to the iPhone, and if you have any pages on the iPhone open, they'll show up here, and you can click on that, and you can see a web inspector, just like if you went to inspect element inside Google Chrome. And this can help us with diagnosing problems. So what I'm gonna do now is go back to the phone, I'm gonna refresh, and I'm gonna click on pay, and I'm gonna try and buy this. So it says we had a failure there and it says we have an internal server error on charges.php. So you can see we got an internal server error, but we didn't actually get any outputs. We can't actually see what the error was. So what we can do is we can say php charges.php to run the script and we can see the errors in the command line. So this in undefined index is just because we didn't run the script properly. We ran it through the terminal instead of the browser. And this warning just means we don't have something installed, but that's a notice and that's a warning, so they're not actually going to get in the way of the execution of our program. This big error down here is because we need to install curl. So we say apt install php 7.0 curl. We'll install that, and now we'll say php charges.php. So charges.php keeps sending us an internal server error. So the way we can fix that is we can say nano charges.php. And we can firstly just change token to make it, uh, instead of stripe token, it's actually token. Because if we go back to index.html, uh, what we're sending is called token, as you can see here. If we try to run charges.php, uh, what we'll get is a 500 error, which is a server error. That's halting the execution of our script, which means we're not actually sending the charge through to stripe. So what we can do is use a sort of proxy. So we can just create another script called c.php and in that we'll run shell underscore exec which is a method just to run shell commands and we will say php charges the php and then we'll pass it a variable called token as a parameter then we'll say token is equal to post token see if that will chmod 777 c.php to make it executable then we'll say nano charges .php and we'll change this from post token to arg v1 which means we're getting the token from the command line as opposed to from the post request and then finally we'll go into index.html and we will change this so instead of posting to charges.php it'll just post to c.php so essentially what this is doing is it's bypassing the 500 error by using a proxy file. So what we're doing is we're going, instead of directly going from index to charges, we're sending a request to this file called c.php, and that file is calling charges.php from the command line, which in which case it gets executed properly, and c.php will return correctly, which will mean that our uh, Apple Pay request will have gone through correctly. So hopefully this will work, so let's just try it. And before we run that, we'll just say nano success.html and we will also go into index.html just to make everything neater and we will change the charge amount to the correct amount which is going to be 10 pounds change the currency to gbp so let's just run this and hopefully everything should work And you can see everything was successful. If we go back to Stripe, you can see before we were on 30 pounds for three charges. Uh, and now if I refresh, we should be on four charges of 10 pounds. And now you can see we have four successful charges. So for whatever reason, Stripe was sending an error to the browser in one of its HTTP headers. Because we ran it using a proxy file from the terminal, uh, the headers were ignored completely. They weren't actually even returned. So everything was successful. So that's how you set up Apple Pay on your website. Uh, some people also had problems setting up their tester accounts. That's because if you've never had a paid Apple developer account, it won't actually work, it turns out. So what you have to do then is just use real cards. And uh, whenever you're ready to actually make this a live program, you go to Stripe, you go back to the Apple Pay section, and you can see where it says, here is your test key. You want to change that to your public key. That will allow your charges to actually go through as legitimate charges and not fake charges for testing purposes. So that's it for this series. Uh, if there's anything more you'd like to see on Apple Pay, just let me know. But that's it for this video. Don't forget to like, comment, favorite, and subscribe. 
and I'll see you next time.